But the question is, why did Kanye use Tiana Taylor to debut his track, Fade? <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, did, did you see the video? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would have used Tiana Taylor to debut my track as well. Yeah. Hello again, and thank you for tuning in to Music Millionaires, where we not only teach the music business, but do our best to answer questions about your favorite artists, give reactions to music videos, movie scores, and more. I am your host, SG1, one half of the Peacemakers and founders of the Peacemakers. Uh, if you don't know about us, Google us and you'll see who we are. Um, and today is Comment Thursday. It was something that we decided to create and we figured we needed to start addressing comments and answer questions. So, first question comes from Spiros Valentazas. I'm assuming that may be Italian. Um, and it says, Hello and Thanks for the info, bro. I have two questions. Is the reservation name, it says nay, same as domain name? Um, I think he's trying to say when you, when you reserve your name, I'm assuming he's saying that because later on he talks about um, the IRS. Uh, registration for Greece uh, but uh, I'm assuming he's asking when you reserve a name for your business is it the same as your domain name now two things here you have that option to whatever name that you legally have created your company in um, you have that option you know if it's like with us you know um, the peacemakers you know if we have the peacemakers registered LLC or whatever you have it registered as, you can use that as a domain name. It's really up to you. It doesn't matter whether or not um, your domain name is the same as your registered name. A lot of companies actually use an, uh, an alias or a doing business as. So for example, if you say you're music millionaires like ourselves, M music millionaires LLC, or let's say Red Stick for us, Red Stick LLC uh, doing business as music millionaires. So the example would be that our corporate name is Red Stick um, LLC, but the doing business as is Music Millionaires. And what that does and what it allows you to do when you register that company that way is allows you your corporate name to be registered as Red Stick and you can do business as Music Millionaires. And why that is beneficial is two things. You can brand and you're branding yourself outside of Red Stick. Say for instance, you want to name your corporation after your grandmother, but you didn't necessarily want to name your brand after your grandmother. This allows you by doing business as when you file that registration with the IRS, allows you to be able to deposit money into your banking account or checking account or business account, excuse me, the same way you would if it was the corporate uh, name getting the, the, the checks. So basically if someone wrote you a check out for Music Millionaires, you'll be able to deposit it even though your corporate registered name is something different. So basically, it will benefit you if you basically, when you register with the IRS, if you're in the United States, um, putting your DBA down, you know, doing business as name. This will allow you to be able to cash checks in the name of your brand and allow you to be able to continue to brand without having to distract your buyers or sponsors or whoever by giving them another name that they may or may not be accustomed to. Uh, so yes, it is possible to uh, use your registered name, legal corporate name, um, as a web address or use it as a domain name, but in most occasions, unless you're using your registered name and using it as a brand, most people don't do it. But the choice is really up to you. Um, now the other question I, I don't really know how to answer about the IRS in Greece. But what I can suggest is if you have the money to invest in 
um, retaining an attorney, a United States attorney, and letting them know what you're trying to do. I am not a lawyer. This is not to be construed as legal advice by any ways, any means far. But please, you know, contact the, 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 the closest attorney to yourself or a trusted attorney that you may already have and find out what are the what are steps um, to the IRS or registering with the IRS when you are an outside entity. Um, and find out, you know I me mean, if you even need to register with the IRS if you're you're from I guess Greece where this guy said and um, find out what the the laws are to doing business from a country in the United States if you plan on selling CDs records or downloads or mp3s or whatever it is you plan on doing because CDs are so outdated um, but it, you know find out what you need to do in order to do that like again you know this is not legal advice I'm not giving you legal advice you know what we try to do is give you the steps to setting up your business and making sure that you secure your business uh, the proper way as a singer songwriter youtuber producer whatever it is business is business and there are steps that you need to take in order to ensure your business from I'm not going to try to pronounce it I apologize but you know who you are why do he look like Meek Mills oh excuse me is it me or do he looks like Meek Mills is you drunk is you had enough I think I'm older than Meek Mills uh, so it's probably he looks like me <laughs> but uh, I, I, I don't see the resemblance um, maybe you do but I don't see the resemblance and maybe you were talking about the younger version of me you know there's two me's the now me and then the younger version that used to do music millionaires when I was you know uh, really laid back and more quiet and really didn't want to be in the camera so you're probably talking about that uh, that guy uh, who looks like Meek Mills wow I didn't know I looked like Meek Mills Okay, now, next question comes from uh, Michael Green, and he asks, uh, I don't understand something. Why are these producers getting beats from everyone else? Why would Dre and others need a beat? Why would he just not make his own? It's not like he, like it's, it's, it requires knowing how to play an instrument. Why would this person making the video not be Dre himself. Good video, by the way, especially the American Dream comment. Thank you, I appreciate that. So, Michael, what I think you're trying to say is why would someone like Dr. Dre need to hire or use producers like ourselves when he's Dr. Dre? I think that's what you're trying to get. He can just make the beat himself. Well, the best example I can give you is Microsoft, um, Bill Gates. Bill Gates is the, the name. This is the name that everyone is accustomed to. Bill Gates started out as a programmer and he, he programmed computers and built computers from scratch. But once Bill Gates created a brand, he created a company that became larger than himself. And Bill Gates does not hand make all of the computers. Dr. Dre cannot do all of the beats. He's a businessman. He has other things to do. There would be literally no possible way for him to produce all of the producers, I mean all of the artists that he's produced, and take care of his business along with his family each and every day. Because one thing about the music business, once you get to a certain plateau, it, it requires all of your time. Producers allow him the freedom and time to take care of other business. Um, you know, you're talking about interviews, you're talking about sponsorships, you're talking about branding, you're talking about um, royalties, you're talking about all the different things. Now, am I saying that Dre doesn't make tracks? Yes, he does. Dre is one of the most hands-on people that we've seen. Dre is hands-on with the artist and very, very smart, uh, meticulous when it comes to his business. But to think that uh, he'll have time to do this all himself, you know what I mean, would be ridiculous. Also, it's not smart business practice. You know, I mean, when you look at chefs, yes, you have a, a master chef, and that chef walks through a kitchen of chefs. But you have this chef that might have cooked this dish, but it was the recipe from Wolfgang Puck, okay? Wolfgang Puck gets the credit for it. He's not only going to get credit, he's going to give you credit as well, and you guys can split the revenue on that particular meal or dish, which is what, uh, you know, under chefs do. Or, or, you know, they get credit for their 
uh, involvement, they get credit, they get paid for it. And it, and it works the same way in the music industry. Uh, people like Dr. Dre are smart enough to know to maximize their efforts. You know, he's not like, um, you know, Men in Black 2, where you, you walk into the post office and you got this one guy smoking a cigarette and he got eight arms shuffling mail through all the mailboxes. You know what I mean? Um, but what he does is he orchestrates it. Dre doesn't have time to do that. And, you know, if you want to make money, the, mo the way that you make money is duplicating your efforts with as minimal effort as possible. If I can have 100 beats being made right now and be making one track on my own, and then get a chance to choose from 100 beats for an album versus one track that I made just today, what would you do? And still get credit for it and still get paid for it because I'm gonna be that one, that, that producer that possibly turns the world on to a new up and coming producer and get paid for doing it. Who wouldn't want that? You know what I mean? This is about duplication, duplicating your efforts with as minimum effort as possible and still getting paid. That's a businessman. This is a business. This is what businessmen do. So why Dre would not be putting his hands on every track is that simple. My efforts are duplicated. I control the final outcome of the product. In other words, he determines what you hear. Okay? He becomes the executive producer, which he is. You get to be a co-producer and get credit. And from that aspect of it, now other artists may seek you because they like what you've done with Dre's tracks that he, he can honestly claim because he's going to orchestrate the sounds. He's going to tell you how it should sound, what emphasis to put on snares. He is composing it. He's putting it together to make it sound. You may be laying the foundation like ourselves, but at the end of the day, it's what he wants. So he gets the final say in it and he also gets the credit because it's not, it's the sound that he was looking for that we do. You know, a lot of times, yes, you can have a track that producers create that needs no touching at all. You know what I mean? Some, I mean, there's producers I've met, known, worked with, producers that have mad skills. You know what I mean? I mean, literally, you know, from the Scott Storches to the, to the Brisses, Andre Brissett, you know what I mean? That have mad skills that literally, you know, the track don't need anything else just to be fine-tuned and mastered. So, just to give you, you know, just to give you an idea, you know, this is, this is the music business. This is the part that we're trying to teach you guys now. Duplicate your efforts with minimum efforts and maximum profit. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe below. Also, check out the video right here. And don't forget, comment. If you have any questions, if you've got something you want to say or got any ideas, comment below. We'll check them out.